Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mini Meeple Melee. The game plays two to four players, and you can play it as a free-for-all or a one versus many, where one player plays as the boss, and the other players play as the heroes trying to defeat the boss. Additionally with this game, because there is a secondary tin or secondary game called Mini Meeple Melee Ice and Fire, you can attach both games together and create an eight player game where you can fight up to two bosses with eight players or one boss. It's kind of up to you and you can set the difficulty level as you choose and how you choose to set these pieces. Now, as you can see, there's no box for the game. And that is because you're going to be using the tin that the game comes in as the playing area. The game is going to come with a ton of different options as far as layouts, there's characters, all the pieces that you're going to need for a mini meeple melee. This is a tactical style game where you'll take actions to try and defeat your opponents by reducing their HP to zero. And if you're the last player left standing, you're the winner. Or if you're playing the team battle mode where you're fighting the one versus many, whatever team has the last character standing is the winner as well. Okay, let's get into the setup of the game and how to play and finally what I think of the game. So because the game plays similar, regardless of which tin you buy, I'm just going to explain it outright. And the way it works is like this. You'll take the tin out and everything inside of it will get dumped onto the table. You're gonna get four different train cards that have a front and a back, as well as a bunch of tokens and a bunch of little um, movable inserts, uh, cards that will reference your character, and of course your player action abilities, your actions slash abilities as a player reference card. There's also some tokens that you'll be using when you rest or when you are defending yourself or blocking yourself from line of sight, as well as some die that you're going to be using for attacking. To begin the game, you will take two of the train pieces and you will place them uh, inside of the tin, one on each side. Then you're going to decide who plays first and picks their character first as well. As people pick their characters, the person who plays last is going to then assign the terrain into the game, as well as where the crates go and where the teleportation circles go. And teleportation circles must be placed one in one side of the board and one on the other other. Then players are going to roll die and based on what they roll they're going to drop their meeples about three inches from the area they want to be at and then they're going to place their meeple up once it's been dropped onto the game board symbolizing where they're going to be starting their turn. And if you're playing with four players you just roll and decide where they go based on that method. Set aside any of the tokens whether they be rest tokens or on the opposite side the defense tokens or blocking tokens and then everybody's going to get an ability slash actions player reference card. Each player is going to have a character and with that character will come a certain number of these little things that they're going to add to it, which will display not only their HP, but if they have anything else like this character here, the alchemist will have vials. Then they're ready to go. If you're playing the boss mode variant, one player will play as the boss and you'll have up to three players playing as the heroes. And there's an easy and there's a hard side for this game mode. However, with the other box, with uh, the guys here, which are it's the fire and ice set, you're going to have the elementalist, which can be played as either hard, uh, easy, yeah, yeah, both hard and easy, but there's, I guess there's additional different types of rulings on them for front and back. Each of the game modes play the same, but one is going to come with fire and ice sides, and the other is going to be more of the water and trees side. Uh, once you have your character set up, your boxes set up, and of course your terrain set up, then you're going to decide, you're gonna start with the player who goes first, and they are going to take their actions. You get two actions on your turn, and you progressively take those actions in turn order until everybody's been defeated and and that is it. Playing the game is actually very simple. We, with your two actions, you will choose any number of the actions that you have available to you, and it's on your little action card. Uh, your actions will include either A, moving up to two spaces, but you can't move diagonally, it's only orthogonally. You can use a skill, which is whatever is on your player's card, you'll have a little skill uh, icons, and you can go ahead and use one of those. You can teleport. If you're on a teleportation space, you can go from one to the other. You can rest basically reducing your actions to zero from two, and you'll get a bonus action for the next turn. You can also take cover. You can hide behind one of the crates or teleportation circles and, um, and or basically any type of wall, and it will potentially prevent you from being attacked. As long as the opponent is on the opposite side of that wall, they can't attack you on their next turn. However, if you're not taking cover, don't have the symbol, they can, especially with ranged attacks. And finally, pushing and pulling. If your meeple is adjacent to a box, you can push that box one space along with your meeple going one space or pull it back one space. 
you get two actions once you've taken both of them your turn is over and if any of your actions involve attacking that works really well as well really simply as well you might have a range if you're melee it's range is right next to you and if you have any more than just that basic range of melee then uh, two three and four is going to be counted up going orthogonally one two three and four uh, if you're in range of a character, you will check to see what your skill does, you and your opponent will roll, and then you'll calculate any bonus abilities that you might have. Are you in range? Are you in protection of cover? Do you have something that gives you plus one to your defense roll against range attacks or melee attacks? Add up those values, and if the attacker has a higher value, they will do their damage to you. If they do not, you, in fact, will not take damage. And if it's a tie, you will re-roll the dice. And that's the game. Once you've played your two actions out, the next player is going to get a chance to go using their two actions until you get people to reduce their HP to zero from attacks. If you have zero HP, you're out of the game. You're out of the melee, the mini meeple melee. And players will continue to take turns up until the point where there's nobody left with any HP except for one last standing meeple. In addition, there is the tin, which you notice there's a wall between the two sides of the tin. In order to move across that wall, you'll need to take a two movement to do so. And if you want to uh, shoot a, a ranged weapon across that wall, it's going to count as one space unless you're on top of a box, in which case you are basically uh, you're over the range that is needed so you can just ignore that space. There's spaces on the board, maybe they're forest spaces, ice or fire, maybe they're water. Water is harder to get into so it takes more uh, movement actions to move into it or move out of it I should say. Forest actions, area spaces prevent you from being attacked with ranged. Um, you have spaces like fire where if you roll a die at the end of your turn, if you're in fire, you might take damage. Ice happens to be that if you get hit while on an ice space, you will move back one space, and so on and so forth. So there's varying different types of uh, space terrains that you'll be affected by in the game, not only by your opponent's different abilities. And with bosses, they function just like basic character, but they're going to have more HP and uh, unique abilities that are going to make them uh, definitely more persistent in the game, definitely more challenging, and the game functions just like the normal melee meeple combat works but it's all out warfare against that one boss and that's basically the game of mini meeple melee regardless of whether you play this game or the other game the only difference is what type of characters you've got and what type of bosses and terrain you have all right let's go through the review of the game i suppose uh let me go ahead and take a look at the box here or i should say not only the box but the playing area as you notice it's all magnified so all of your meeples have magnets on them your teleportation spaces and your boxes and each of your characters when they start on a certain space that is where the game is going to begin so this is actually a full layout of what the game is going to look like when you start playing and it's always going to be different wherever you drop your characters based on how the last player chooses the different train pieces and where the boxes go and the maps uh, interchangeable. There's quite a lot of different customization that is available in this game, even though there's very limited number of tiles for terrain. And that's because you're going to get eight different sides and you can put them on either side. You can add the boxes anywhere you want. When boxes cover up a certain space, that space won't be available anymore. It won't count as like a fire space or an ice space. It's just simply a box that you can kind of walk up onto, which gives you additional range, lets you shoot over the walls, etc, etc. This is exactly what you would think it is. It is a micro tactical game. You are going to be playing this game similar to, I guess, something like a tiny epic game, but it's even tinier than a tiny epic game. Uh, yes, it is. It's tinier. It's one of those mint tin games. Uh, it plays up to four players in a super tiny box. So what is the game really? Well, basically, when you choose your character, that is going to symbolize what you're playing as in the game. It gives you the player's color. It's going to give you the different abilities of that character. And it'll give you some unique or, uh, unique abilities, like passives, that you can activate throughout the game. And if you look, the abilities will tell you what they do, whether it be a shield that adds a defense to all your rolls, or uh, maybe it's slippery, you add two range to your defense rolls. Tactical, automatically take a cover, well rested. When you rest, you gain an HP, and you take one additional action on your next turn, as opposed to just taking an additional action. You have to select your actions wisely in the game. Yes, there is a bit of luck involved with rolling these dice, but as you select your characters, you'll learn that there are certain ways that they want to attack more than other ways. Certain characters want to be at a very great distance, others want to be up close and personal. And if they get up close and personal with a character that is like a wizard or a mage or a sorcerer, that sorcerer is going to be in deep doo-doo because the character hits really hard. Characters are going to be eliminated very quickly in this game. This is a very speedy, 
expedient game <laughs> when you get up close and personal or if you're a mage and you're blasting fireballs, it can be excruciating. On the opposite end here, you have characters like the elementalists who are going to be able to use certain things like harnessing nature and elemental strike. Or if you're using something like the alchemists where you're going to be able to lob specific uh, vials at players. It can do damage not only your opponents, but also your allies as well. You could play a team game if you wanted. You could play a game against a boss. And some of these characters are more volatile, but do more damage than others. Each of the different characters also has their own unique passive abilities, which represent what they are trying to do, where, what spaces they want to be in, where they want to be at, and it's going to make a difference in that way as well. Do you want to rest? Maybe you're very far away from other players and you can use an extra action next turn as they come closer to you, or maybe you're a ranged character, or maybe you're a melee and you're trying to avoid range, so you're going to duck behind cover, take one of these and prevent people from seeing you in their line of sight. It's really up to you. Some of the characters are going to give you a bonus to attack or to defense. You'll be utilizing these tokens from the Fire and Ice set. And if you want and you own both games, you can mix and match the different terrain tiles. It doesn't matter how you place them. Everything is fully compatible. It works well together. You can choose any of the different characters. You can play up to two bosses. It can be a two versus a six game. It can be a three versus one. You can play all out eight player warfare with all the different characters here. And the only amount of luck in the game is based on, of course, the die roll, which is very important. It's going to be involved with combat, but there's a lot of mitigation as well based on what character you're utilizing, how you utilize them and where you are on the board. We had a lot of fun with this game. This game has quite a bit of tactical aspects to it. It does remind me of the Tiny Epic Tactics game. That one's got a little bit more oomph to it. There's a little bit more stuff going on with it. There's more setup and whatnot. This one is very quick, very easy, and you can play this literally anywhere. As long as you can roll the dice in here, you can play the game, which is nice. So if you're playing somewhere in the car or whatever, it'll work perfectly. Now, you might not be able to play eight players in the car. I mean, I guess you could if you tape these two together, but you're going to be able to play a nice four-player game. And there's tactical decisions that you'll make. I played this with people who had never played board games before as my first playthrough, and they got it fairly quickly as well. And then I played with people who have played many board games, and they jumped into it and it took them about a minute to figure out, and we played this game over and over again. I was actually surprised with how much they played this game, um, because we had like four or five other games we were supposed to play that night, and we only ended up playing three others because we jumped on this one for so long. I like tactical games. I like luck-based combat, and I like the modular difficulty of boards. I like the boss mode to the game, and I like the different variety of characters. Are there any negatives to the game? Well, it might be too small. If you got big fingers or you can't read really well and some of these are maybe uh, smaller text, it might be more challenging. Some of the rules are a little bit like could use some work. It talks about two tins in the main rule book of the game and it's referencing these two tins. It's not referencing the two tins that you might, have, might get if you buy both of them. But other than that, the game is very simple, very easy to understand, has a lot of uh, value, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Now, as far as artwork goes, there's uh, virtually none. It's mainly symbols. There's some artwork for the terrain. I'm not going to give it a plus or a minus in this category because I think it just does what it needs to do. You need to know what the terrain is, what it functions with, and how it works. Um, the, the crates are nice. The teleportation circles work well. The magnets stick very well. As you can see, I can take this and even turn it upside down, even when you have the meeple on the teleportation space, which is very useful. There's some magnets in here, which I think just hold the board together, but I'm not super sure. And of course, the mini die work well as well. So if you don't mind a super small micro style game that's basically a pocket game that you can play anywhere, this is going to be for you if you like tactics games. If you don't like dice rolling combat, it's not going to be for you because you might always end up rolling a one and that just might be how it works, even with the mitigation and changes with the characters. It only mitigates so much. If you just suck at rolling dice, just unlucky person, then probably steer clear of this one. If you like an all-out battle combat game with a bit of tactics involved, then this is going to be a solid, fun experience for you. I'm going to keep both of these because I'm actually going to be playing this in my car whenever I take a, a ride to a small location or a convention, something that I can teach some people. Alicia really enjoyed this game as well. We had it with our friend and she wanted to play this again. So I'm going to keep these, stick these around. I'm interested to see what they do in the final versions. Of course, this is a, a prototype copy as far as I'm aware, so it might be changing, but what's here and how it works functions very well. I really enjoyed this game and it's something that I think you should strongly take a look at if you like tactical games. Mini Meeple Melee by Baron's Games. Uh, one of my favorite 10 games I've played in quite some time. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mini Meeple Melee. 
Uh, if you're interested in taking a look at the game, go ahead and hit the link down below in the description where you can pick it up. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one, but maybe not this one. I mean, I guess I could zoom in really close so you can see the board here, but it is tiny. That's one thing about Mini Meeple Melee. If you haven't grasped that already, then uh, something wrong with you. <laughs> all right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Go ahead and like, comment, and hit that subscribe button, hit the subscribe bell notification button, and as always, I look forward to having a mini Meeple Melee with you next time.